All right, I've been hit up a few times about how to rig my O3 in an Apex HD frame. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna knock out a couple of birds with one stone here. So I'm well over 500 packs on the D DJI O3. If you could see, um, my O3s have taken quite the abuse. And this is 500 packs plus across uh, four Apex quads. So it's safe to say each, each O3 system has 100 plus flights on each one with lots and lots of abuse. Um, through all of that abuse, I've only had antenna failures, so smashing the antenna and crashes, and severing cables. I've lost two cables, so the, the uh, MIPI cable that goes from the O3 air unit to the camera, lost two of those, and I've probably lost a half a dozen or so antennas. Um, the reason I'm doing this video is because I was asked to show how I set up my O3 in the Apex, as I repeat myself, and also how I um, make it super durable in the back of the frame so you don't damage or lose as many antennas. Because I imagine if you're running this unprotected, you're probably going to lose a lot more than a half a dozen over a 500 pack period of time. Um, been flying it about five months now, almost six months. I love it. I've completely shifted everything over to the O3, so no complaints. I have good range. The lighting, they improved quite a bit with the latest firmware update, but if you still like the Cadex Vista as your, your bright light HD system, you're probably going to want to stick with it because it is a little brighter in the dark situations. Um, straight into it, so mounting the O3 in the back of the Apex, I don't bolt it down. Um, you can figure out how to bolt it down, but uh, I use the double-sided, the 3M 15-pound double-sided sticky tape to secure it in place. And then my power leads lay over top of that with these wires in place out the back and it presses this in inset. I have yet to lose an O3 system due to a crash that's ejected out of the back of the Apex HD frame. On the actual cable, I run my ESCs a little bit different because I dampen everything. So I have the standard Apex setup with the bolts, the ESC bolts, the short style with a plastic nut and then a silicone washer to separate the ESC because I've had ground out situations in the past. This prevents that and it also creates plenty of space to run your O3 cable. So I've done this in light of um, severing and tearing up those ESC cable or the uh, O3 cable. They're only about 10, I think actually about 15 bucks a piece. But what I do is I take some uh, friction tape, get that on Amazon. I'll put, put all the links to everything that I'm showing you here in my description so that you can find it easily. Don't have to search around like I did. But I secure the O3 cable to the base, the back plate of the Apex, like that. So now it can't flop around and vibrate and touch, com come in contact with the ESC. And then I feed the excess into the front plate where the camera is captured. Again, I don't use the O3 as my primary digital camera just for flight. I use the Action 2 still. I'll show you how I mount this. So you remove the shipping bolts that come standard in the O3 camera pack package here. So it's flat and flush. And then in the Apex, with the O3, because it is a larger camera, I fold over to one side with the 15 pound 3M tape, and I put a single piece on the other side. And then I determine the angle of the camera where I want it. So this is a seven inch platform. I have it probably at about 30 degrees in this ship where it's squeezed in. And Impulse now has a kit. If you don't want to tape your cameras in, there's a kit they sell that allows you to extend it out so you don't get standoffs in view. I don't care about the standoffs because I use the Action 2. What I care about is durability. So in 500 plus packs, I've never lost a single camera. Not a crack, not a shear, nothing, not anything. No damage to my cameras. I will say that because of my up tilt, so I run extreme up tilt, if you do the same, be careful because if the carbon comes in contact and wears through this top plate, it will ground out. Uh, I want to say right there, if you can see, is a pretty good example. I don't know if you can look in there and see that, but you can see where the frame has worn against the camera. That will ground out over time. So be, be advised, if you do run extreme angle, mount it just a little bit lower and it'll be fine. Um, same thing, you see in the standard five inch apex, two-sided or folded in half, 15 pound, and a single piece over here, and it locks your camera in and it will not move at all, no matter how many times you crash. The antenna, pretty straightforward. So you take a standard air, the uh, O3 air unit, take some flush cutters, carefully trim up the little straw here, 
like I'm doing, you'll get it all the way up to the top till about, I'd say a half inch remaining. And again, be careful because those wires can get in there and you'll end up severing those. So be very careful. So work your way up. I think I may have done it with this one. Keep chewing it all the way up till you get about right there. Pull the cables out of the way. Snip it at that spot. And now you have the free hanging cables out the back. I have the link to these prints also. I'll put those in the description. So if you want to, if you have Apex and you want to do what I am doing to protect your antennas, all the prints and everything will be in there. Align the DJI to the front of the aircraft. Press it in. So the DJI is aligned as flight, like forward of flight. The wires come out. And what you'll do is you'll just wrap these in, tuck them inside, and then ultimately mount them to the standoffs in the back of the frame. And you see how the wires are all tucked in there. And again, 500 crash or 500 flights, 500 crashes for sure. No issues other than I have had the wires slip out the back underneath here. That's only happened one time and they ground it out and shorted, which I just replaced the antenna. So the final step in all that is to put E6000. Um, thought I had it out, I don't. I at any rate, E6000, I coat everything with E6000. So this is the final product with glue. I start at the top and I spread the E6000 all the way down around the sides of the TPU mount. And I rarely ever lose an antenna, ever. You can see how abused this antenna is. It's taken all the hits, all the diggers. That E6000 just creates a level of durability that just is far superior than just the standard plastic. You see it on there. It's abused, beat up there beat up, banged up. That one is, was recently replaced from Rampage, but you can see it's already started to take some abuse. Um, it does not affect the attenuation of the antenna. You still get really good performance. This, with this all coated up and with the way you see it, far further than the Caddx Vista standard digital. But again, E6000, start from the top, work your way down, and when it glues, it'll be smooth around the antenna, so it almost looks like you have no glue on the antenna. And that is pretty much it. Recap, double-sided 15-pound 3M tape to secure the O3 air unit in place. I tape it to the, the frame because I use a little bit higher standoffs. You can run it either in between the flight control or the ESC. It's, it's really shooter's choice. Two strips or one folded over, which is easier, of the 3M. Single strip on that side, and that locks the camera in place. Or you can use the Apex kit that they sell now. Um, Again, TPU mount for the Apex, antenna squeezed in, modified the straw, the little um, guide, trimmed it, E6000 to protect it, and that's about as bulletproof as you can get with this setup. Got any questions, hit me up. I'll be glad to answer, and I hope this is useful for you all. Take care. Be safe.